Sometimes things change, sometimes things stay the same. But once in a great while, some things change the course of history. That's the case here at Purdue's Rare Isotope Measurement Laboratory, where a professor and his team have redated the famous Peking Man remains and determined that the Homo erectus in China is nearly 300,000 years older than previously thought. As you can see, I am right in the middle of everything going on, and I'm here with Professor Daryl Granger. We're going to be talking a little bit about what's going on around us today. Well, we're at the tail end of an accelerator mass spectrometer. Um, behind us, we have a particle detector where we're counting individual atoms of aluminum-26 as they've been accelerated through the machine, and they're stopping in this box right here behind us. So tell me about this machine. Is it common for universities to have one? Well, Purdue has a, a pretty large accelerator mass spectrometer. In fact, there are only two in the country that are this large, and there are perhaps a dozen around the world. So Purdue has been very lucky to have this machine. Um, we took what was originally a particle accelerator installed in the 1960s, and then uh, in the early 1990s converted it over to accelerator mass spectrometry. So it's a, it's a wonderful opportunity here at Purdue. My work using this to date the Peking Man site uh, looks at these two different isotopes in the mineral quartz. It's a commonplace rock, and with that we can date when that rock was brought into the Peking Man cave site. For someone who isn't that um, familiar with what the Peking Man is, can you describe to me a little bit about that? Peking Man was one of the early human ancestors. Uh, the, the Peking Man site in northern China is important today because it tells us something about when Homo erectus was able to live in a fairly cool environment. Uh, like we see around Beijing today. It was discovered in the late 1920s, uh, so it's a really important site in the history of human evolution. But it's been very poorly dated. There really hasn't been much to date in there. Uh, a colleague of mine in China uh, read about my work at other cave sites in South Africa, and he contacted me about dating this site uh, because he knew that there was quartz sand in there and that my method would work. Uh, so a couple of years ago, uh, we went over and collected sand and we collected stone tools uh, from the museum there that were brought out in the 1930s, uh, and we dated those with the accelerator mass spectrometer here. So through this process, you were able to determine exactly what? Well, the age of Peking Man was originally thought to be somewhere between 200 and 500,000 years old. This is based on uranium that gets soaked up into bones after we die. Um, but the problem is that the uranium can also be leached out of the bones, so it's not a very reliable dating method. Um, what we were able to do is to date the rocks around the fossils, um, and by looking at these cosmogenic isotopes, this aluminum-26 and beryllium-10 in the quartz, uh, this is not leached out over time, it's not lost, so we got a more accurate date. We were able to show that, in fact, it's quite a bit older. Uh, it was about 760,000 years old, um, which, interestingly, puts, it, puts Homo erectus in northern China during a glaciation, during an ice age. And as you can see here at Purdue University, we're not only changing history, but we're also changing the way we see ourselves. I'm Gina Lazar for Bowler Bites.